and I'm still going to do some momentous fapping in the background while I just really point you at this screen. Oh, at least I wrote a question for you. Two questions, in fact. Sorry, I've got, I've got my ill child in the house voice on as well. <laughs> Which is, the ill child is not entirely responsible for how late I am on, because you know that I'm always really late, but it doesn't help things. At least you're here with me now while I faff. That's better. Much nicer than just faffing and panicking on my own. There we go. Great. Ah. Yes. Come together. Right. I just need. <laughs> I just need some A4 paper, some scissors, some glue, and some pens. I've already got most of that stuff. This is, it. this is the third time I've taught this lesson, obviously. I have taught it twice on, on Facebook. But you wise people coming to the last lesson, you know that I like to improve it. And I have improved it. But it, I'm also really late. Right. What do I need? I'm just going to get some paper and then I will return. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. Right. Ooh. Okay. Paper, scissors. Flipping you around, I'm so sorry. People probably wandered off. I'll give you a good wiggle so that people, the screen gets caught in the corner of their eye. Like, oh, it is actually starting the time. It is, it is. Uh, pew. Hello, Science Alliance. Hello. I'm just going to rub off this IGCSE physics stuff. Hello. If you happen to be new, um, I am an adorably disorganised person, but it's not usually that bad. I'm really sorry for the incredibly late start. I'm blaming my little child. It's not entirely her fault, but she's not here, so I'm going to blame her. We're learning about animals of Antarctica, which is mainly penguins, actually, but I've slipped in a few things about a bug and a seal. So hopefully you've answered these questions. I asked you which of these six things was a continent and a country or which was neither. And I asked you which of these animals lived at the South Pole, polar bear, penguin, neither or both. So the first thing I'd like you to do, we'll just get set up for our little kind of drawing activity we're going to do. And then I'll lead you through the answers. So what I'd like to do, please, is can you just cut a strip of paper that's about two centimetres? Like, sort of two stamps next to each other. What we're going to do is cut out five little squares and then 
kind of decorate them to look like five different penguins heads and then we're going to stick them on a like a rubbish map of Antarctica that we've drawn to find out where they live okay so you see what I'm doing I've got a strip of paper it's about two actually it's more like four isn't it just a piece of paper just cut out some squares just some small squares size of a really what is that the size of I don't know a big stamp and we'll talk about continents because it's it's quite a well-known fact that Antarctica is a continent but I thought well let's look at what a continent actually is to try and get into our heads how massive Antarctica is because it's huge so continents if you're a scientist it's a very unsatisfactory word it just means a big bit of land sort of separated by water but sometimes not like some countries teach their school children that there are five continents some think there are seven it's just a very flimmy flammy word but anyway I thought let's max out so here are seven continents um Africa is a continent it's the one in the middle of this map in the yellow uh North America is a continent so North America includes the United States of America which is a country but also Canada yeah uh, and South America is the continent below it in the dark green. So if you've heard of the Americas, or if you've got like an adult in the house that likes New World wine, the Americas is the same as the New World. It just means North America continent and South American continent both together. Someone decided that this little bit of land wasn't enough land to make it all one big continent. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Antarctica is indeed a continent. Yes, that's right. That's what we're talking about today. And just FYI, South Africa is a country which is right at the bottom of the continent of Africa. I find it, we, it's a bit of a problem that we often talk about Africa like it's a country. If you felt feel bad that you didn't know that, there is an entire book called Africa is Not a Country for grown-ups. So don't worry about it. I so thought it was a good time to get that in there. Right, here's a map of Antarctica that I love because usually it's covered in ice, whereas this one does allow you to see all the details. And what I want us to do is to draw a really rubbish version of this map on a piece of paper so that we can stick our little penguin pictures on it and talk about where different animals live. So I don't think this is gonna to be too hard, right? I think basically we get a piece of paper, we put a cross with the South Pole in the middle, and then we'll, let's just draw a big circle, but kind of leave a gap at the top left, and then put this little sort of octopus arm sticking out instead. So yeah, can you, you can see, we have talked about ice if you've been to previous lessons. The green bit is land, and these white bits here, that's just ice. So Antarctica sort of looks a bit bigger than it is in photos because all that looks the same. But actually, let's draw the circle and then we'll draw the ice shells on. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So I've got my good black pen that works. Here we go. <clears throat> so right, across in the middle. I'm just going to say that right in the middle, that's where the South Pole is. South Pole. And then, yeah, I think all around the South Pole, but just leave leave a gap in the top left. Let's just, just draw a circle, that's all right, isn't it? I tried to do it in a really complicated, accurate way on Facebook in the first lesson, and it took ages, it just wasn't really worth it. Right, and then, well, I guess I'll, from my top left, I'll kind of scoop down a bit and then up, yeah? We're sort of drawing a tadpole's tail, aren't we? There we go. That'll be fine. That's fine for our needs. Sorry, Antarctica, but that's that's fine. So if you've done something like that, it sort of looks like a person with a pointy nose. Um, this pointy nose, just while people are catching up, is called a peninsula. A peninsula is just a bit of land that sticks out into the sea. So a lot of the animals we're going to talk about today live around this peninsula because it's the middle of Antarctica that is really cold. And the bit that's by the sea is, is slightly warmer, so that's easier for them. Um, right, let's get some ice shelves on, because not all this is land, is it? So I'm just going to draw like a big triangle sticking out. <laughs> Should we write Ross Ice Shelf? It's quite famous. If you just want to write ice, you can. I'll just write ice, I think. Let's get on to the animals. And then we need to cut out another triangle. I'm not going to worry about this island here. I'm just going to draw all this bit as an ice shelf. That is the Ron Ice Shelf. Let's do that. So basically the tail, it just, it's actually a bit more cut away than it looks, isn't it? So I'm going to draw another triangle up here like that. There we go. And that's ice as well. If you've got a blue pen, we can colour it in like that. There. I think that's all we'll do for now. 
while I talk to you about the continent of Antarctica. And then we'll get on to the animals. Is that all right? Yeah, nails it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it up behind me because um, this is YouTube. When I'm on Facebook, everything's backwards, but on YouTube, everything actually looks forward. So I could just do that so you can still see it. It's all right, isn't it? It's okay. Great. Right. So having, having done that, I'm now just going to point you at the screen again. Because if I live in the UK. If you live in the UK as well, it's quite convenient for us that the UK is almost exactly 1,000 miles long from the very bottom to the very top, right? Um, and I don't know whether you know this, but in the UK, it being 1,000 miles long, there are animals that only live in the north and animals that only live in the south. I know, because the conditions are different enough. Here we go. So here's the UK, 1,000 miles long. <clears throat> There's an animal called the yellow-necked mouse, which is found in different countries, but in the UK, it's only found in the South. And there's an animal called the Scottish crossbill. This is not a picture of a Scottish crossbill. I couldn't find one. It's a different crossbill, but it only lives in the north of Scotland. So if you consider that, and then you think about the fact that, I don't know if you spotted these beautiful mountains right across the middle of Antarctica, you could fit two of the UK just across those mountains. So Antarctica is, well, it's continent. It's absolutely massive. Do you think we'd better put those mountains on our map? I think we had. Because they're important. Because I don't know if you've noticed that there's a West Antarctica and an East Antarctica. We talk about uh, Antarctica being an, uh, an ice sheet. It's actually two ice sheets. It's a small ice sheet. It's quite hard to say. Covering West Antarctica. And it's a really big ice sheet covering East Antarctica. Separated by these... Uh, Trans-Antarctic Mountains. So I won't, I won't bother to write the name. You can if you like. But I will draw the mountains, which start down at the bottom, here we go, of this ice shelf and go all the way up, sort of to the bottom of the next ice shelf. There we go. So they, they are they're quite important mountains because they separate the two ice sheets. There we go. <laughs> Um, so we've talked about global warming quite a bit on Theory of Science, obviously, it's a big topic. Um, we talk about how Earth is warming up. It's not all warming up at the same rate. And actually, it's the West Antarctic ice sheet, which is heating up faster than most of the rest of the world. So the sea around um, the West, West Antarctica is getting warmer and the air above Antarctica is getting warmer, but particularly in the West, which you, you might have spotted as a problem because this is where most of the animals in Antarctica live. Okay, so that leads us to our question. Which of these animals lives at the South Pole? Polar bear, penguin, neither, or both? If you are used to theory of science lessons, it was a trick question, wasn't it? It's always a trick question. It's neither. There are very, very few animals living at the South Pole because it's right in the middle of Antarctica. It's incredibly cold. And the, the penguins that we're going to talk about today and the seals, they eat fish, don't they? And the fish are around here in the sea. So a penguin would have absolutely no reason to walk penguins aren't even very good at walking all the way from the sea to the north pole so now you now you get to correct people when they talk about penguins being at the north pole at the south pole they are in the south they're in antarctica um but they're not in the south pole right let's start our little picture drawing session shall we oh dixie's here oh that's nice i just got a little message from dixie saying that she's watching oh and i know that lila's watching as well hello Right, so I've got my little, my five little squares. It really doesn't matter how big they are. I'm just going to sellotape mine to the table because I've been trying to draw them with one hand. It hasn't been working. Um, so the thought, thought the first penguin we better talk about is the emperor penguin because it's the one that pops up on all the documentaries. It's the biggest penguin. Um, here's a picture because we're going to draw its head, so we need to study its head closely. So it's gorgeous. So it's got a completely black head. It's got this tiny little black eye, this really quite long orange beak and it's got this kind of blending like sunset picture going on on the side of its head so it's got really dark orange bit next to its cheek and then it blends out into yellow. So what I thought we'd do is we try and draw that just on a square of paper. Maybe I'll show you what I mean and then you can do it or if you think it's rubbish you, you can not do it and ignore me. So I'm going to say that this corner of the square is my penguin's beak. And the emperor penguin's beak is quite long, so I'm just going to draw a long orange beak. And then, so pretty much all of it is black. Oh no, this is my rubbish pen, I think it is. Oh well. It's got a tiny little eye. There we go. And then 
yeah, this is all black apart from just this little cutaway here with this lovely, really rich orange colour and then yellow colour. So I'm going to do a cutaway like this and a little bit of orange and then a little bit of yellow. And, that's, and then I'll colour all that in black and that's going to be mine for penguin. You see what I'm doing here? So we'll just do five of these and then at the end I've got an amazing penguin quiz for you to see how well you know your penguins and you're going to have to spell uh, different words out with the answers and then give me some words. It has spawned a great idea for a Theatre of Science t-shirt. We were talking about this on Facebook yesterday so I'll fill you in. There we go. So this is <laughs> my emperor penguin. That's all right, isn't it? I think that's quite good. You could cut it into a circle if you like, but I don't know, I'm, I'm going for the Minecraft penguin look. I quite like that. There we go. Uncanny. <laughs> so, shall I hold this up for you? I'll tell you what, I should point you at the actual penguin, shouldn't I? So instead of copying my drawing, you can go off the penguin that's on the screen. I'll do a bit more yellow while you do that. Emperor penguins. So they are the biggest penguin. Um, and they, they behave slightly differently to the other penguins for quite a few different reasons. <coughs> I'll point you back up so you can see me. Because we're going to talk about five different penguin species today that live around Antarctica and the Antarctic Peninsula. And like, I'm, I'm not a biologist by training, so I was thinking, why aren't they all the same? Like, they all live in the same place. Why don't they look the same? So... One of the big things that makes the emperor penguin stand out is how they breed. You might have seen this in documentaries. So penguins do live on the coast where there are fish, but emperor penguins mate with the same male and same female mate for at least quite a long time. And when it's time to mate, they do come inland. They come maybe about like 50 miles inland to the same nesting site. And the female lays one egg and gives it to the male emperor penguin. And then the emperor penguin famously just looks after it sort of sitting on it, huddled over it for like about 90 days. And it's the middle of winter in Antarctica when this is happening. It's incredibly cold. They all huddle together for warmth. They sort of take it in turns to be on the inside and on the outside, like they shuffle around. Um, but yeah, they obviously can't eat during that time because if they went off to get food, then the egg wouldn't hatch, the chick would die. So I think the, one of the reasons the emperor penguin is absolutely massive is because it has to keep warm um, and that it's just a better way of keeping warm. You don't lose as much heat if you're big. And also because it's got to be able to store a lot of food in its body so that it can not eat for 90 days and still be okay. Are you okay? Are you doing your emperor penguin? Shall I take this manky bit of sellotape off so that you can, oh no, give him my penguin an extra white stripe. Um, so yeah, that's one of the reasons they are so big. And then the female returns. The female's gone back to the sea after laying the egg to stock up on fish. And then the female comes back takes the egg off the male, which is apparently quite difficult sometimes because the male's just really in the looking after the egg zone and doesn't want to give it back. But eventually the male is encouraged to go off to the sea where they can get found up on as many fish as they can catch. And then they come back and eventually, obviously, the chick um, gets its little feathers and can go off on its own. The reason they have to do this in the middle of winter is because they want the chick to sort of be ready for the summer. So the chick is around when it's really warm. So if you were looking after the egg in nice comfy conditions, then it would just get to winter and this tiny little chick would probably die. So it's, it's all very well evolved. Um, the other thing that makes emperor penguins stand out, if you finished it, let's stick it onto our map now if you've got some glue, um, is that they, they dive and chase after their prey. So some penguins hunt on the surface, some penguins hunt in packs, um, but the emperor penguin dives really deep, deep, deep down into the ocean and eats food that it finds there. Because how all these different penguins are surviving? Right, um, there's a lot of animals living around the peninsula. Emperor penguins, hey Wormy, actually live all around Antarctica. They're only found in Antarctica and they do live all around it. So I'm gonna stick it, I'm gonna stick it down here because we're not gonna put any other animals down there. Oh, Brendan and Aidan are here as well. Oh, I'm liking this trend for people messaging me to tell me they're here. Uh, I'm going to label it as well, because we might get confused, because we've got five penguins to talk about. Here we go. Emperor, oh man, I always forget. Emp, er, uh, or. Er, uh, and then an or. So I'll put emperor. And then I've used a red pen, 
so that I can just draw little dots kind of roughly around where they live. If you, if you ever go to Antarctica, don't be using this as a map to find penguins, because honestly, I don't, really, I don't really know. I'm just gonna draw dots all around here, all around Antarctica to show that emperor penguins are very well scattered. Don't put any over the ice though. They don't like living on, on these bits of ice there. They, they, tend, they tend to live on fast ice, which is ice that is very well connected to land. Um, because that they want to raise their chicks there, it's just just safer. We'll talk. We'll talk about that a bit more later. I think. There we go. So yeah, they're just they're just dotted all around. There's not actually that many of them, um, and they're they're kind of they're becoming endangered. We maybe think, but but they they are scattered all around. Right. We better move on. Oh, I've got a picture of what they eat. Look, isn't doesn't that look delicious? They eat Antarctic squid, which looks like that. Yummy. A lot of penguins, which we'll talk about, eat krill, um, <clears throat> but penguins have got to find what we call different niches. So in biology, in order to survive, it's a good idea to kind of be able to eat something or live somewhere that your sort of competitors can't do. So emperor penguins dive really deep down and eat squid because a lot of the other penguins aren't doing that. They're just faffing around on the surface. So it's, that's a, the emperor penguin has found a good niche there. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about, about this dude, the Adeli penguin. Here we go, look at that, look at those eyes. So again, these ones are only found in Antarctica. We thought we'd start with those ones. And they're really, really widespread. They're at least one of the most widespread penguins in Antarctica. Um, let's draw that, that cold staring eye. So you might, you've kind of maybe got a little clue about how the Adeli penguin lives because it's got a much, much shorter beak, right, than the emperor penguin. It's almost, I'm gonna say stubby. Um, it's not that gorgeous orange color, is it? It's a bit orange and a bit brown. I'm gonna draw, get another little square and just draw a very stubby little orange beak. And then, yeah, just a really big distinctive oval white eye with this black ball in the middle. So let's just go big. There we go. Make sure that you don't touch the sides of the eye with the pupil. It's got to be a real cold, hard, just staring into your soul kind of eye. And then they have got this little cutaway again, haven't they? But it's just white this time. So I'll just do that little oval on the bottom. Yeah, and then colour all that in black. And that's my Adelie penguin. But again, I will point you at the actual Adelie penguin uh, so that you can copy the real thing and not just copy my drawing of the penguin. So yeah, these guys do eat krill. Show you a picture of krill. Tiny little krill, <laughs> so cute. Krill are massively important in Antarctica. They're teeny tiny little crustaceans. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Almost like see-through body. But they're so important. So many animals eat krill. There are so many krill in Antarctica. Humans have started to get a bit of a taste for krill. We like to feed it to farmed fish. So that, that's a massive problem uh, for another time probably. That because humans are catching loads of krill, there's less available for the animals of Antarctica, and it's really important to the food chain. So the Adelie penguin, it's, um, it swims in a generally much more kind of shallow areas than the emperor penguin. It doesn't dive down as deeply, and it, it mainly eats this krill. Yeah, I finished my little drawing. Whoop. And they actually, yeah, I'll flip you back around for a second. Um, and they also, yeah, they are, they are the most widespread species. So they get everywhere as well. But again, not on the ice. You won't find them on the ice. So let's put a little bit of glue on the back of that. Don't worry, if you haven't quite finished your Adeli penguin, I'm going to have a seal interval after this. So you've got time to catch up. So that's the Adeli. It's cold staring at... How I'm going to remember, because there is a little quiz about how to recognise penguins at the end. How I'm going to remember it is, I'm going to imagine I've got a friend who's an Adelie penguin, but they're quite an intense character and they often turn up at my house unannounced and their cold staring eye terrifies me. So quite often I open the door and go, ah, Adelie penguin! <laughs> no, I've, no, come in. It's lovely to see you. It's always lovely to see you. <sighs> and like politely try and cover up the fact that I always shout in terror when I see the Adelie penguin's eye. That's how I'm going to remember it. You can do whatever you like. Right, again, um, there's a big colony of Adelie penguins up here. I'm gonna put mine Adelie penguin up in this corner. And again, write Adelie in maybe orange, because I haven't used orange yet. And then put more dots everywhere. So the Adelie penguin, 
was named after a, a French person's wife. It was a big French expedition. Adele E. There we go. I E on the end. Big French expedition to Antarctica. We just love exploring Antarctica, don't we? Uh, and yeah, chap, chap named it after his wife, Adele. That's how the, that penguin got its name. There we go. So they uh, they don't necessarily live like on top of emperor penguins. They just live all over the place, which is why I'm doing this. Pew, pew, pew. But again, not over the ice. Big fans of fast ice over there. Penguins. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Uh, yeah, let's have a seal interval. <coughs> So here is a picture of a Weddell seal, seamlessly linking to the Adelie penguin, because Adelie penguins and Weddell seals live in a very similar place. Oops, that's just me. There we go. Whoa, look at these Weddell seals, they're so cute. Um, it's a bit confusing because the Weddell Sea is at sort of in the top of Antarctica, and Weddell seals are where the Weddell... The Weddell Sea is where Weddell seals were discovered, which is why they're called Weddell seals. But they actually live everywhere. Isn't this so cute, aren't they? I had to just stop on Facebook while I thought while everyone went, Oh my god, it's so good, good dog, good dog. Do. Um, so yeah, a bit of a weird name, isn't it? Like, what a silly thing to do. Hopefully we're a little bit more sort of thoughtful now. Weddell Sea is over here. You're in the Weddell Sea, you see a seal and you go, Oh, I'll call it the Weddell Seal. Just check, right? Just have a brief check. Weddell seals live all over the place. Silly name. Anyway, little puzzle for you about Weddell seals, which we did do in our ecosystems lessons ages ago, but I couldn't remember, so maybe you can't remember either. And you won't all have seen both. You could walk up to a Weddell seal in Antarctica and it wouldn't be bothered. It'd be fine. It wouldn't bat an eyelid. But in the Arctic, if you got within 90 metres of a ring seal, which we talked about last week, uh, that's up near the North Pole, the seal would run away. It would be very scared of you. Why? Why the difference? Why would a Weddell seal uh, near the South Pole in Antarctica just be like, meh? And an Arctic ringed seal would run away. I've put run away. I don't know. They don't exactly run, do they? Flee. It would flee. Uh, the answer is, she says, just blow the nose, um, it's because the Weddell seals don't really have any predators on land. No. Um, oops, going backwards, not forwards. But the ring seals have loads of predators, so they've learned to be very wary. And it's true. Um, there just, there aren't really any, there aren't any land mammals naturally living on, on Antarctica. It's just too dreadful. <laughs> Last week we looked at the Arctic where there were Arctic foxes and little weasel type things and hares. We're not going to get that here. As it's just a formidable place with hardly any food to eat in the, in the middle of Antarctica. Most of them live on the coast. So orcas, killer whales, uh, will definitely kill a Weddell seal. But obviously they live in the sea. So a Weddell seal has just got used to the fact that when it's on land, there's no polar bears, not like in the Arctic, coming over to, to kill it. Whereas the ringed seal, bless it, has learned to live in fear. Um, yeah, so Weddell seals, what's really interesting about them is... They, and a lot of penguins, they like living on ice that is attached to land. Because if they can live on ice that's kind of attached to land and quite far away from the sea, it means that animals that live in the sea that might try and eat them, like orcas, they can't get underneath the ice because there's not enough air there. Because obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but um, a lot of the but orcas are marine mammals, so they do need to come up to breathe, so they can't get trapped under the ice. But Weddell seals have got amazing teeth that they can get down into, they can cut into the ice to get air holes for themselves. So yeah, this is why we're not seeing a lot of animals on ice that is kind of too close to the coast. Right, should we move on? We've done a deli penguins. They're very small and they're very closely related to these other teeny tiny little penguins that are called gentoo penguins. There we go. So we better put, draw, draw a Gen 2 now, if you've got um, another bit of paper on you, a little square. So they've kind of got the same terrifying eyes as their, ah, Deli Penguin! But there's a few differences, aren't there? Look, their beak is much longer. So I'm going to draw a longer orange beak, not quite as long as the Emperor, but still reasonably long. Um, the same kind of eye as the, uh, ah, Deli! 
But, oh no, look, I haven't stuck it. This is embarrassing, isn't it? But there's a bit of white. Oh, you do you. <laughs> I've got to have both hands for this. But yeah, I just don't find their eyes quite as terrifying. They look a bit more gentle. They've got this bit of white right above their eye, which is just kind of, I think, making them look a little bit less terrifying. And they've still got this, this white tummy. All right, so I've just done that, actually. And I think I'm just going to colour that in. Maybe I'll do a little bit of white on the bottom here. And then and then colour that in. Um, so, yeah, Gen 2 penguins, they build little nests, these guys. I, I want to flick you up so you can see me, but I also think it'd be good for you to look at this. I'll give you a little bit more time looking at this penguin. Um, yeah, so we talked about how the emperor penguin doesn't build a nest. The Gen 2 penguin does build a nest, obviously not out of twigs because there aren't any, um, but it uses moss, little bits of feather, and quite a few of these penguins use stones as well to... And they, like most penguins, they take it in turns to sit on the egg. Um, and then when the chick is hatched, they take it in turns to look after it. Very nice. And they're really fast swimmers, are the Gen 2 penguins. So I, I told you how the emperor penguin does a lot of really deep diving for its food. The Gen 2 penguin is getting involved in that niche as well. They do, they do a lot of very deep diving. It's called uh, they pursue their prey. There we go. I think that's okay. Pick you back up. <clears throat> and Gen 2 penguins, confusingly, because a, a porpoise is an animal that we're not going to talk about today, but they do this thing called porpoising when they're pursuing their prey. They're, they're like chasing their prey down. So some animals just stay near the surface and just kind of uh, catch it like by working in teams. Um, but the Gen 2 penguin, it can chase its prey for quite a long way. And yeah, porpoising is where they swim along near the surface of the ocean and then they leap out and they reckon it's like as they're leaping out obviously they can get their breath because they do need to breathe they don't obviously breathe in underwater um so as they leap out they catch their breath but they also get a really good view of where their prey is in front of them like probably a fish so they can dive down and grab it i know porpoising everyone done by the gentle penguin presumably not that gentle if you're a fish right this one lives mainly on this peninsula here where it's warmer. So I'm going to stick it to the peninsula bit. And I guess we'd better label it as well. There we go. So I'll put that over here. We're not gonna draw dots all over the place because yeah, it really is concentrated on the peninsula. And I'm not gonna draw any dots, so I'll just do it in black, the Gen 2. Right, moving on to possibly the most evil looking <clears throat> and the most evil penguin in Antarctica, the chinstrap penguin. So we've kind of done the little family now. The Adelis are very small, the Gen 2s are small, and the chinstrap penguin is also small, and they're all very closely related, those three kinds of penguins. So the chinstrap penguin is the easiest to recognise because it's literally got a chin strap. Nowhere have I been able to find out why it has a chin strap. Usually if animals look really distinctive, it's like so they can recognise each other or I don't know, maybe the one with like the sharpest chin strap wins a mate. But anyway, here's the chin strap penguin. I also couldn't find out why their eyes are orange, but that works out quite well for us, doesn't it? Because we want all our penguins to look a little bit different. So if you've got an orange or a, some people say they've got red eyes, I'll let you decide. But this one, it's a bit more complicated to draw, isn't it? I'm just going to hold you on the screen for this one, I think. It's got a black beak. There we go. And it's got a smaller eye. Yeah, it's, well, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to colour in this orange and then put a little black dot in the middle. Look at that. It's good, this, isn't it? I think this is quite good. Now, this is the hard bit. It's got a black head, but it's, like, got a white triangle. It's got a, it's got a chin strap. Ugh, what are we going to do? Are you just doing it already? I'm confused. Okay, behind the eye, I'm going to just draw a triangle, one line of black on one side of the beak and one line of black on the other side of the beak, and then I'm going to colour it in on the top. That's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll start from here. One line down, and that's the chin strap, and then one line up, and then colour that in. Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? But then this bit, there's a bit of white behind the, my goodness me, draw with Rob makes it look so easy, doesn't he? I'm going to do this. 
and colour all that bit in black like that. That's what I'm going to do. Is that right? Yeah. I'll point, you at the, I'll point you at the chin strap penguin so that you can decide what you're going to do. And I'll meet you up with you in a couple of seconds. If you want to copy mine, <laughs> thanks. I'll show you mine in a sec. So yeah, chin strap penguins, uh, they're pretty aggro. They quite often fight with other penguins. Um, and they are, I think, so, uh, some people say they're one of or possibly the most abundant penguin in Antarctica. They're the, the one that there is the most of. Uh, they're certainly not endangered, which is good. Um, they lay circular eggs. I could not work out. Oh, no, sorry, they don't. Um, they make a circular nest out of little stones. It's the Genty penguin, the one we've just talked about, that lays circular eggs. Couldn't find out why. Why is that an advantage? Eggs tend to be egg-shaped so that they don't, like, roll away, whereas an um, egg that is a ball. Anyway, that's the gentoo. We're talking about the chin strap, aren't we? Here we are. So this is my chin strap penguin. Um, so these guys hunt mainly at the surface. That's their niche, so they're not getting in the way of the deep-diving gentoos that are chasing their prey or the emperor penguins that are diving really deep down. Um, they catch mainly um, krill, and fish, they also do pursue their prey, they chase their prey, but yeah, they tend to eat, well, I've said, I've said here they mainly eat krill and fish, they eat slightly bigger food than the Adelie penguin, so the Adelie penguin, I think, the really small one, which is everywhere, eats like smaller krill, and the chinstrap penguins are standing out a little bit by eating bigger krill and fish, um, yeah, so the interesting thing about them is they breed on slopes that are ice-free, this is, they live on ice-free land, which is only about 1% of the land in Antarctica. So again, they're around this peninsula when it's warmer. The good thing about nesting on land that isn't icy is that you get a little bit more time to breed. Some of these penguins are desperately trying to have eggs and raise their chicks before the cold comes and kills them. But the chinstrap penguins got a little bit more time. So they're the most, there's the most penguins, the most penguins are chinstrap penguins, but they don't live all over the place like the Adelie and the Emperor. So again, I'm going to stick those up here. Um, but they do have absolutely enormous colonies. Look, here's a picture. Sometimes over a million, over a million chinstrap penguins. Brutal. It's a lot of poo. Oh, look, in fact, a, I didn't notice this before. There's a lovely marking there of some penguin poo that's like splattered onto the ground. And apparently... Um, it, they can be seen from space. Penguin poo in these colonies can be seen from space, which is dead useful for scientists. Someone worked out that you can actually work out how many penguins there are, do a really good estimate uh, by just looking at how much poo there is, which is how they, they do monitor penguin populations now and work out if they're going up or down. Right, so my chin strap penguin is going to go here on the peninsula. There we go. Um, fun fact about, not a fun fact about chinstrap penguins, but remember I said that there were the most of them, the most of any penguin, okay? Um, the leopard seals that are around, we haven't talked about them yet, really gorgeous, slightly terrifying animals, they eat, I'll show you a picture and, and give you the facts at the same time, they eat between 5 and 20% of all the chinstrap penguins that are in Antarctica every year, not just this one. But that's a lot, isn't it? A fifth of chinstrap penguins potentially going into the stomachs of leopard seals. But, you know, the leopard seals have got to survive as well, haven't they? So, right, I'd better write the word chinstrap and then we can move on to our final penguin. So, I'm sorry, some of you are going to be quite upset that we're not doing macaroni penguins. Chin strap. I just thought even we can get penguin out, you know, even as science fans, we don't want to be drawing penguins forever. We're going to cover the king penguin because it looks really similar to the emperor penguin. And if I only teach you one thing this lesson, I'm going to teach you the difference between a king penguin and an emperor penguin. So here's the king penguin. Get your final squares out, chums. It's really similar, isn't it? It's got this bright, beautiful, very long orange beak. Um, the only difference really for me, I mean, the king penguin is smaller, but obviously if you're just looking at one photo, you can't really tell. The king penguin's yellow patch is like an apostrophe shape. It's got a black outline around it and then it's been coloured in. Whereas the emperor penguin's gone for the more, the more shaded look. So yeah, that's, that's how you can tell the difference really, I think. Its eye is slightly browner, isn't it? But again, I feel like if you didn't have them both next to each other, that would be quite hard to see. 
Okay, so we'll do nice long orange beak. These are, again, these king penguins, um, they can dive really deep down, like 300 meters. 300 meters! The average house, I think in the UK at least, is about 20 meters high. So you do the maths, 300 meters. How many houses is that on top of each other? Okay, so I've just drawn an eye and an orange beak. It's pretty much black, isn't it? But you've just got this, someone said on Facebook, it looks like it's wearing a cape. It really does. I'm going to do a big yellow apostrophe on the side of its head, like that. There. I think that'll do. And then the bit underneath the apostrophe is kind of greyish, isn't it? Ah! I didn't say to bring a grey pen. I'll just do some black spots. So it's, it's, it's sort of a bit of a cheat doing the king penguin because it doesn't just live in Antarctica, actually. It, it, um, it does live further south as well. Um, it lives, it, they can, they're really good at just living everywhere actually. They, it's the most marine of all penguins. It spends the most time in the sea and they can even live on icebergs floating around. So they live at like the bottom of South America, which we did look at briefly at the start. Um, but yeah, they, they live in Antarctica as well, sort of near the peninsula. And they look so similar to emperor penguins, I thought it was worth giving them a little nod. They're the second biggest penguin, you might know that. I, I don't know, kings are slightly lesser than emperors. There we go. They are not nest builders, aren't the king penguins, which I guess makes sense because they're the most marine one. So they just lay one egg, stick it under a flap on their leg, uh, their foot, and hope for the best. There we go. Um, oh yeah, this bit at the bottom, what are we gonna do? I'll just do some dots. There. That's all right, isn't it? Hiya. So we'll put, we'll stick those. I'm gonna stick it like almost sticking off the paper to show that it's, it's, not, it's not only found in Antarctica and it's not found as low down as some of them. So last week we, took, we looked at the animals of the Arctic and we, did, we talked a lot about blubber, this thick fatty layer that a lot of animals have to keep them warm. Um, just while you're finishing that off, do you reckon penguins have blubber or not? So last week we were looking at like Arctic foxes and polar bears and saying that they're both mammals, right? Mammals give birth to live babies, they don't lay eggs. Mammals have fur. It's weird, isn't it? Because a, a whale is a mammal, but even whales do have a little bit of fur. Um, so the polar bear and the Arctic fox, we were saying, are both mammals, but the Arctic fox doesn't have any blubber. The Arctic fox stays warm with its fur. The polar bear has fur because on land, fur is useful for keeping warm. But when the polar bear gets dived into the water, fur is totally useless and it needs its blubber to keep warm. So do you reckon penguins have got blubber or not? Obviously, they're not mammals, are they? They don't give birth to live young. They're, they're birds. Right, yeah, I'm going to stick this up just right at the top. And right, King, do penguins have blubber? What do you think? I mean, some of you will just know, but it's more fun if you don't know. There. I think I'm, oops, that was my kitchen, that's embarrassing. I think I'm done. I did some, I did some baking last night, which I don't need you to see the aftermath of. Um, they do. Well done if you're shouting at the screen. They do have blubber. I was just wondering whether to draw Weddell seals on here, but I don't think I will. Weddell seals are all over the place. Obviously, orcas are all over the place in the sea. They're even up at the North Pole. I think we'll just stick with the penguins on the map. I'm going to call it a penguin map of Antarctica. It's, it's a shame we didn't do all the penguins, but maybe you could go away and look some up and add some. Penguin map of Antarctic. Ah, yeah, splendid. Ah, oh, that's nice. Thank you for doing that with me. Um, yes, penguins do have blubber. Um, but again, like the sort of seals that we looked at last week, they don't have blubber on their flippers and they don't have blubber on their feet. Why do penguins' feet not get incredibly chilly? It's because, well, one of the reasons is, I, I didn't know this, you know how, like, if you're building a snowman, your hands get really cold and you kind of lose feeling in your hands and you can't move your hands and it's really awkward? The muscles that control the penguin's bones, their feet, 
a much higher up their leg. So it's almost like a kind of puppeteer, like working their legs from a distance. So they don't, they don't have that same kind of problem. They can still move their legs around, even if they're really cold. They've got some clever thing with their blood where hot blood goes past cold blood. They've got it sorted out. You don't need to worry about penguins feet. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> right, our last animal. <laughs> the animals, I said that we, there are no land mammals in Antarctica. There is one creature that also lives sort of a little bit more inland in Antarctica. If you don't like spiders, you probably shouldn't look at this picture. This is, well, it's actually two Antarctic midges doing, I guess, what Antarctic midges do. The Antarctic midge. It's native to Antarctica. Like it, you know, it belongs there naturally. It can't fly. It can't actually really survive the terrifyingly chilly temperatures of Antarctica, but it buries one centimetre down into the ice, and that's enough to for it to generate enough heat to stay warm so that it can survive. What an existence. Imagine that. To an Antarctic midge, that is, that is a normal life. And we're the weird ones. Huh. So, yeah, just a little shout out to the Antarctic midge there. There are, there are mammals, I should say, in Antarctica now, but they're ones that humans have brought over. So there's quite a lot of rats now living in Antarctica. I think there's some dogs and cats, but yeah, they're not naturally found there. Okay, are you ready for your penguin quiz? How much have you learned about penguins today? I'm gonna, I've got four different words. I'm gonna show you different pictures of penguins and you need to match a penguin to the letter and then tell me what the word is, okay? Um, I've got a picture of a food chain here, which I think we've pretty much covered actually, but just, just for the sake of... Uh, completion. Plankton, tiny little, they're not actually a plant, I don't think, but they, they do get energy from the sun and turn it into sugar, these tiny little cells. It's entirely the plankton that feed the krill, and the krill, like I say, is sort of propping up the entire rest of the food chain. So the fish that we talked about that some of these animals, penguins eat, they're eating krill, so if it weren't for the krill, there wouldn't be any fish and there wouldn't be any penguins. Um, the squid that the emperor penguins are eating, they're also eating krill, and krill are the only thing that like blue whales eat, which is just incredible because the whales are so big and the krill is so small. And the, again, the small tooth whales, as you can see, um, the orcas, the killer whales, if you like, they are eating the leopard seals. The leopard seals are eating all kinds of penguins and it's all propped up by krill. Right, let's do the penguin quiz. Do, do, do. Just a quick reminder, your emperor penguin with its little sun dawn, dawn shading thing. King penguin with his apostrophe. Chin strap penguin, got a chin strap. Ah, Delhi penguin! Oh no, you're always welcome. And the Gen 2 penguin with this little bit of white above her head. It just looks a bit more gentle, doesn't it? The one that does the poor boy sing, leaping out of the sea. Right then, children, know your penguins. <clears throat> so, I've got emperor penguin, which is matched up to the letter S. This will always be the same. <clears throat> Emperor penguin is S, a deli penguin is T, Gen 2 penguin is E, chin strap penguin is R, and king penguin is A. So here you've got a penguin with a very long orange beak and this bright orangey apostrophe on the side of its face. What penguin is that? If you think it's an emperor penguin, write S, a deli penguin, write T, Gen 2 penguin, write E, chin strap penguin, write R, or king penguin, write A. So that's your first letter of this three letter word. The next one. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a penguin uh, staring at the ground with its hard, piercing eye and its stubby little brown beak. It's covered in poo, but don't let that put you off. If you think that's an emperor penguin, then your second letter is S. If it's an Adeli penguin, write T. If it's a Gen 2 penguin, write E. If it's a chin strap penguin, write R. And if it's a king penguin, then write A. And your third letter. Don't worry, we've got three more of these coming. If you're a bit stuck on this one, you'll get it eventually. Uh, this happy little thing with its flapping little flippers and its bright orange beak and its little bit of white above its head. Is that an emperor penguin, right S? An Adani penguin, right T? A Gen 2 penguin, right E? A chinstrap penguin, right R? Or a king penguin, right A? And the answer is, if you, you're gonna have four words. If you wanna put them into a sentence, then feel free at the end. This first one, that was a king penguin because it's got this bright orange apostrophe, sort of yeah, nicely, neatly coloured in. So the first letter was A to match King Penguin. The second letter, this is an Ah, Deli Penguin! Always lovely to see you. Uh, that was a T. And the third one, this is a, a Gen 2 Penguin, right? Closely related to your chin strap and your deli with this little bit of white above it. So the first word 
What's eight? Well done if you got that. But if you didn't get that, do you want to do it again? Yeah, of course you do. Right, so here's your second word. What's this penguin? It's, it's got a line underneath its chin. <laughs> Emperor penguin, right S. Adelie penguin, right T. Gentoo penguin, right E. Chin strap penguin, right R. King penguin, right A. Trying to see if I've got any facts about these guys that I didn't tell you about. Uh, they, these are, if you've ever seen a penguin propelling itself around on its stomach, this is how this kind of penguin uh, likes to move around. Next penguin, what's this one? It's got a long orange beak and an orange apostrophe by the side of its face. Emperor penguin, right S, Adeli penguin, right T, Gentoo penguin, right E, Chinstrap penguin, right R, a King penguin, right A. This type of penguin can hold its breath for up to nine minutes, folks. Nine minutes. And the third letter, ah, hi. It's sort of big white oval eye with this black circle in the middle. And this, I keep calling it stubby. Maybe that's a bit rude. This beautifully formed little blacky orange beak. Emperor penguin right S, Adeli penguin right T, Gentoo penguin right E, a chin strap penguin right R, King penguin right A. Oh, I've got a new coffee supporter. That's very nice. I don't know if they're watching or it's just a coincidence. That's lovely. I haven't even done my advert yet. Okay, so the answers are, yeah, the first one, it had a chin strap. It's a chin strap penguin, isn't it? So that was R. The second, we gave that, yep, yeah, first letter was an R. The second one, that is a king penguin. So the second letter was A. And the third one was an Adeli penguin. So that's a T. So the second word was rat. Okay, let's take this up a notch. Let's go four letters, right? Here's the first penguin. So the first letter of your four letter word Oh, look at them. They're so happy that this chick hatched, aren't they? They're delighted. It's a very big penguin with an orange beak and it's got these beautiful shaded uh, colours on the side of its face, going to orange and then going to yellow. Incidentally, yeah, yeah, it's uncanny, right? Uh, a emperor penguin, right? S, a deli penguin, right? T, Gentoo penguin, right? E, Chintra penguin, right? R, King penguin, right? A. Moving on. Second letter, it's just a bunch of terrifying penguins arguing with each other. And they've all got quite short orangey beaks and big white eyes with black circle in the middle. What penguin is that? Write in your second letter. The third letter. What's this one? I don't want to encourage you lot to eat unhealthy foods. I'm not saying you should you should buy these or eat them, but they've done their research, haven't they? The uh, the penguin on the side of a penguin wrapper, pa -pa 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 -pa, pick up a penguin. Uh, it's a definitely a kind of penguin, isn't it? So what kind of penguin is that on the penguin bar? Emperor penguin S, Adelie penguin T, Gentoo penguin E, Chinstrap penguin R, King penguin A. This penguin has cartoon penguin, but it's got a sort of very clear orange blob on the side of its face. There's a little baby one there as well. Not very realistic, that. I don't think, is it? I don't think they're formed with all those markings. It'd probably be a bit brown and furry. Anyway, anyway. And your final letter is this thing. <laughs> yeah, they are... I told you that they were the most aggressive penguin. This one's looking proper aggro. It's got a black beak, browny, orangey eyes, and this very clear, very distinctive black line underneath its chin. Okay, so let's go through these answers. The first letter, they were emperor penguins. So the, similar to the king penguin, but they're the biggest penguin and they've got that lovely shaded pattern. So that was an S for the first letter. The second penguin, these are, ah, deli penguins fighting with each other. So that was a T. The third letter, that's a king penguin, isn't it? On the side of a penguin wrapper. So that was an A. And the fourth one was a chin strap penguin. It's got a chin strap. So that was R. So the letter, the word was star. Right, final one then. What have we got? Rats, star, eight. And here's three happy little penguins, all waddling in a row with black heads, short orange beaks, and just a big eye. Oh, don't come near me. What letter is that? Next one. Okay, this one has caused some debate. I might be wrong here. Um, 
I thought this was one type of penguin. Everyone on Facebook was arguing me and saying it was a different type of penguin. So you might want to write two letters here. You might want to write which ones you think it could be and then you'll work out what the word is after that. So this is the logo from Penguin Books. Yeah, you know, the wonderful publishers, Penguin Books. Um, they do some great kids stories. So their penguin is just black and white, right? Just black and white. It's got a white eye and it's got this sort of little line of white on it. And it's looking upwards. So I thought this was one penguin. And yeah, everyone on Facebook was saying something different. I think maybe the colour of the eye is a clue. But then also the colour of the beak is confusing. I don't know. You decide what penguin you think that is. Emperor penguin S, or Delhi penguin T, Genty penguin E, Chinstrap penguin R, or King penguin A. And we can fight it out at the end. Third letter. Here's a, it's just looking like the definition of a penguin. It's got a bright orange apostrophe on the side of its head. King penguin, A, chinstrap penguin, R, genty penguin, E, Adelie penguin, T, emperor penguin, S. Your fourth letter. Am I going too fast? I don't think so. YouTube in it, you can always pause. The fourth letter is this thing. I could not find out for the life of me why they have reddy brown eyes. There's also a yellow-eyed penguin. I, I, I really searched and I just couldn't find out. Anyway, it's got this black line underneath its chin. What kind of penguin is that? And finally, the last letter. Oh, they're making a shape of a heart with their heads. These penguins with this bright orange, very long beak for diving down and catching squid. And they've got this bright orange sort of shading to yellow bit on the side of their head. So what's that last letter? And what is the word? Let's go through it. Um, these first penguins there. Ah, Delhi penguins. Always a pleasure. So that letter was T. The second, I thought it was a Gen 2 because it's looking up, right? So you maybe this is the white bit on the top of their heads, but it's looking up. So it kind of looks like it's on the bottom. But some people were saying chin strap, which is totally fair enough. I mean, you can consult. Consult, I mean, it would have like more, more white, wouldn't it, around its beak? And it would have a red eye. But then this area around it is almost exactly the same kind of gorgeous brownie red colour as the chinstrap penguin's eye. So maybe the designer's trying to tell us something. I don't know. I went with Gen 2. If you went with chinstrap, then you went wrong. It's a picture. Um, so I put the letter E. Anyway, the third letter... That's a king penguin, isn't it? With that really distinctive orange apostrophe. So the letter was A. The fourth letter is a chin strap penguin. It's got a chin strap, people. Come on. It's not physics, is it? And so that was an R. That was very rude to biologists. Biology is, is very, very complicated. And the final one, that was an emperor penguin, wasn't it? A little bit like the king, but it's got this shaded instead of a really obvious um, apostrophe. So the last, let the last word was tears. So if you have made the sentence... Um, rat ate star tears, <laughs> then well done. You have just designed the, the theatre of science piece of merchandise. Everyone on Facebook yesterday was very keen on the idea of a t-shirt that says rat ate star tears. Um, I haven't done any fa Facebook theatre of science merchandise, um, but if I ever do, rat ate star tears, definitely on the list. Right, that is the end of this lesson about penguins basically animals of antarctica i very much hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for joining me um if you are new and you're thinking this is like a weird thing for this person to do as a hobby no this is actually my job it's amazing so how it works is ever since lockdown i have been streaming free lessons and i've just kind of produced more and more and more stuff so now i do free igcse physics lessons just like this i do this lesson which is free um it comes with printouts which are available on my facebook group and on my website um and i do a lego story show which is happening um it's about unicorns it's like a science show but it just happens to be about unicorns this time which is um on at half past 10 on youtube if you want to come and it's all free and people just pay me if they want to and people are doing it i can't believe it i definitely wouldn't have got around to it yet if it was me but you lot are just amazing and organised. So if you would like to pay me, if you're using me as a resource, you can pay me £5 a month on this website called Coffee. Uh, I'll put Coffee. So if you search Coffee Theatre of Science on the internet, or if you go to my About section on YouTube, which is where you are now, uh, then you find this link to Coffee. And yeah, 
it just works out incredibly well. That five pounds a month, hopefully for you, isn't that much like compared to other lessons that you might pay for. Because um, I do three things that you could come to per week when I, it's not the York holidays. Um, but yeah, it's it's enough because there's enough of you that it can be a job for me, and I will send you nice things. So if you sign up to support me now, you're basically on the list for getting my Theatre Science magazine, which I write. It takes absolutely ages. The next one is so long overdue. I'm really sorry. If you do support me, you are just very lovely, patient people. And I have no excuse. It's just taking ages. But it's going to be very big. It's going to have a lot of free things. But anyway, if you sign up to support me now, I will send you a past issue of Theatre Science magazine to tide you over. So everyone who signs up gets a pair of rainbow glasses that makes you see rainbows because who wouldn't want to see rainbows? They're, they're amazing. And I'll send you a little thing I wrote about uh, how they work, because that's the most fun bit. Um, I'll send you some my stickers. And also, yeah, if you sign up now, then this is the past magazine that you will get. It's about sleep. So it's got some information about koalas and a koala origami bookmark that you can make, because koalas sleep the most of any animal. It's got an article about what happens to your brain as you sleep. It's got a beautiful comic that my husband illustrates for me about how we maybe didn't used to sleep through the night and like why that is. Oh yeah, it's got my favourite thing that I've written for any theatre science magazine. It's got a choose your own adventure where you've written a novel and depending on how much you know about sleep, your novel either gets turned into a film or you just end up like wandering around America. <laughs> oh yeah, and I send you a little bag with some lavender in it and a piece of fabric so that you can make your own sleep squish which is scientifically proven to uh, help you sleep at night and there's yeah there's some other things as well i'm very proud of theater science magazine so basically if you contribute towards my wages by paying me five pounds a month then um i say thank you by sending you theater science magazine uh, when it's when it's ready but yeah i'll send you all that stuff now in fact probably today to say thank you for signing up and just to kind of tide you over right I'm gonna go over to my Facebook page where when I'm live on YouTube, I always put a post on Facebook because uh, you can't come out on Facebook on YouTube, you might have noticed. So there's a post on my Facebook page saying, if you're watching live on YouTube, then you can always comment here and say hello, and then I'll come back to it in the end and say hi. Did I explain that very well? Whoa, loads of comments, brilliant. Look at this. Is that clear I saw? Just letting Facebook load up. Here we go. Clear can't wait for your next magazine. Oh, thanks, Clear. I love writing it. That's the really annoying thing. It's like I really do love writing it. It's just, it's really difficult because I suppose what people are paying me for is lessons. So I always feel like I need to like plan the lessons before I work on the magazine. And I just, yeah, I just don't, I haven't, I haven't had much time to work on the magazine. But it is coming. The comic is done. The free gifts are sorted. I've even got them in my kitchen. No way, Edwin Solomon and Jeremiah are making penguins. What does that even mean? What are you making penguins out of? Do you mean my penguins? Do you, are you making like pastry penguins? That sounds like a good day. Oh, Miles, it's my first live session, but I've been watching for a few months. You love the magazines too? Oh, that's nice. Although it's sort of making me feel bad when people say that at the moment because I really want to send you another one. I love writing you that magazine. Uh, clear, well, thank you for your nice comment anyway. Edwin Solomon and Jeremiah, hope your penguin's looking good. Miles, that's nice. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Here's Bella's dad with the excuses. <clears throat> He's at work saving lives. Really, really Bella's dad, really. Ugh. Bella's dad is the enemy of the science alliance. He's always got some rubbish excuse for why I can't be here. He just basically just hates children and he doesn't want them to be happy. I think last week he was like planting a tree or rescuing a pet or something. Now his job is saving lives. <laughs> Hello, Edmund. Hello. Oh, whoa, what? You drew that? No. Edmund wanted to share this picture he drew of a penguin and a polar bear following last week's lesson. You drew that? What? That's amazing. Okay, I am showing everybody this. Here it is. It's very cool. That's a great design. There's even a little igloo in the background. Is this one of the pink? Okay, so there's a polar bear and an igloo, which suggests that humans are living in this place. And there's a polar bear. So I'm thinking this is the Arctic, the North Pole. And Edmund heard our story last week about how some person took like nine king penguins to the North Pole where penguins don't normally live. And uh, just for weird reasons. And this is them meeting. Isn't that nice? Oh, Edmund, that's incredible. 
Wow. I'm very impressed. <sighs> Shame we don't think that sort of thing from Bella's dad, isn't it? Bella had your ears pierced on Tuesday, so now you have two holes. You're going to get some penguin earrings. Nice. Oh, Jay, Daisy and Daniel, hello. Oh my goodness, Jay, Daisy and Daniel, seeing you here has just reminded me that I'm supposed to be doing the Unicorn Lego Storytime in 20 minutes. And Unicorn Lego Storytime is looking a bit messy. It's all over the place. I need to, I need to go and get it finished. Humphrey here, and Daddy Penguins are terrifying. Thank you, Humphrey. They are, aren't they? They are. Hello, Arthur and Alba. Hello, good to see you. All right, uh, uh, Edwin. <coughs> Ed <coughs> Rose, your name's easiest to say. I'm going to start with you. Hello, Rose. Say hi to Evelyn and Annabelle and Edward for me. I am struggling to say their names today. Claire, watching live. Yes. Kenton. Hello, Kenton. Good to see you again. Amber says hi. And guess what? Oh, no. Amber, you're doing what I did. You're going to IMAX to see the Antarctica film. Yeah. We went to London um, with the fam over Christmas and went to, honestly, if you're ever in London, it's the, probably the best thing I've done in London because it was pouring down with rain, it was really cold. The kids were all a bit like, ah, people and the stress. And we just went to the IMAX and it, it's like the biggest screen in the UK. And they, they just show, low, like, I think they do a different one sort of every so often. You've got to book it quite soon in advance. And they do far in advance and they do like one about Antarctica. There's one about fungi growing. That's what we're going to see next time we go. Oh, I'm so excited for it. It's going to be really cool. Oh, there you go. Look, if you've given the information in the comments, there's a school screening. What? Can you go to... Oh, I did not know that the school screenings were open to home editors. That's really exciting. All right, I need to tell people about that. Thank you. Oh, why would they call it a school screening? I can see why, but that's great. That makes... That's brilliant. And there's loads of seats left because the ones in the holidays sell out. Oh, good information. Thank you. Yeah, that is a... I would definitely just go and see that again. My sentence is rat eight star tears. Nice, nice. Hello, Sebastian. How are the cats and rats surviving? Yeah, and why are the cats not taken back by their owners? Sebastian, that is brilliant. Yeah, you've, you've really, can I be completely honest with you, Sebastian? The two times I, t I read that, and then I sort of forgot whether I'd read it accurately or not. And the last lessons that I taught on Facebook, I just said rats because it makes sense, doesn't it, that humans would bring rats because rats are always with humans and they would just get off the ship and then they would just stay there. Um, and I said cats this time and I thought, really, that doesn't make any sense. How would the cats survive? <laughs> but I said it out loud and he picked up on it. Um, there, are, there are huts, there are like areas where Antarctic explorers have come and built like huts or stations while they've explored Antarctica. So I guess that's where the rats are. I mean, that's where the cats are. Maybe there are some people. Oh, no, of course there are. There are people living in Antarctica. Yeah, there are. There are scientists stationed on Antarctica, studying Antarctica and studying the penguins and stuff. Why they took cats with them, I don't know. I don't know if they do that nowadays. Yeah, you'll have to look that up yourself. I'm sorry. Well done for picking me up on that. But I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there are cats there. But I don't know the details. I wonder if the lady who... <laughs> yeah, Bella, that's such a good point. I was thinking, oh, Adele penguin named after that French guy's wife, Adele. That's so sweet. Yeah, maybe Adele had terrifying staring eyes. Maybe she turned up at parties and everyone was like, oh, oh no, it's great to see you. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, hello, Ryder. And baby A. Hello, baby A. Hello. 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 You shouldn't be watching telly, baby A. Just ignore me. Grace and Hope are here. Nice. Penguin toys also in attendance. Oh, that's nice. Ah, oh, Grace and Hope have just reminded me that I'm wearing a penguin costume and I'm doing a unicorns show in 18 minutes now. And this is just paint. Oh, oh Grace and Hope, thank you. That would have been awkward. Hello, Kaya. Good to see you. Hello, Robin. <laughs> Robin and Hissy just sending me a gif of just a never ending load of jumping penguins. Hello, Imogen and Ophelia. Hello. Happy Science Day to you. All right, Ada. Is it Ada? It is Ada and Ezra and Oren. Hello. Good to see you. Would it run away because there are more predators in the island? Yes, exactly it would. Yeah. Ah, hello. Suki and Arza and Eunice and Salah and Musa. Hello. Hello, Archie. Sending me a little picture of a penguin because ring seals are hunted. Nice. Yes. Sky and Evie. Hello. You're probably coming to, uh, to this show about unicorns as well, aren't you? I really should go, but I'm just enjoying, enjoying reading comments. Lila. We'll be watching live. 
Loving the course. Nice. Haven't missed any. That is very cool, isn't it? I liked how you call it a course. That makes it sound important. <laughs> I've just been calling it like five lessons in a row. Yeah, it's a course. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this Theatre of Science course on the polar regions. I'm just doing newest comment now because some people don't know about these comments until I start reading them and then I leave and then I get comments like, ha, ah, oh, you've gone. See, here's Pat. I wouldn't have been able to say hi to Pat if I hadn't refreshed. My penguins look horrifying. <laughs> oh, do they? Oh dear, all of them. I love the Choose Your Own Adventure. Oh, so do I. I wish you hadn't said that because there isn't the Choose Your Own Adventure in the next acids issue. And now I feel like I should put one in. <laughs> there is a like, what kind of acidic thing are you question quiz, which uh, has also had good feedback. I can't, should I make it even later to put in a Choose Your Own Adventure? I don't know, I don't know. We have loved drawing penguins this morning. Oh, that's nice. Right. <sighs> I think I've said uh, hello to everyone who wants to leave me a comment. And I'm going to go, I'm back to Kyron Humphrey again, that's good. I'm going to go, I've got 16 minutes now to reset Lego story time about uh, unicorns. So I will see some of you in 15 minutes. Go have a drink and, and just like rest your eyes from the screen. I'm going to wash this paint off my face and I'll see some of you soon. If not, I'll see you next week for our last lesson on the polar regions, where we're going to be looking at what I call the Northern Lights, but if you're in Australia, you might call the Southern Lights, the Aurora we'll be talking about. So we're going to do a magnet. Uh, activity. Okay, I'll see you all very soon. Bye!